Hello guys, welcome to the chemistry lesson. In today's chemistry lesson, we'll continue from where we ended. And uh, this is the chemistry lesson number two on the topic which is writing chemical formula of uh, compounds. Okay, so I started looking at writing chemical formula uh, from the previous lesson and this is lesson number two. So if you did not watch lesson number one you have to click on the link that will appear here to watch it or you can watch the video up to the end because there will be a video card that will pop up if you watch while it's on youtube and that will lead you to the first video on writing chemical formula all right without further ado let's go straight into the lesson okay so with me here we have an example which says um, write the chemical formula of the following compounds. Okay, so we have um, sodium sulfate, then we have calcium sulfate, and then we have uh, uh, copper to nitrate. So let's go straight into solutions. Okay. So when writing the chemical formula of compounds, what we do we use what we call chemical symbols. So remember, we are writing the chemical formula of sodium sulfate. Okay. So we need to write the chemical formula of sodium. Now, where do we find the chemical symbol of sodium, not formula? The chemical symbol of sodium is found from the periodic table, and on the periodic table, our sodium is represented by capital N, small letter A. Then this is the sulfate. So this sulfate cannot be found on the periodic table because it is it is a radical. All right. Now, what is a radical? A radical is a group of atoms that are found in many compounds but do not exist independently. So, like a sulfate is a radical. It is found in many compounds such as the sodium sulfate, but this sulfate does not exist independently, and therefore we need to know its formula by just memorization. So the formula for sodium sulfate, I mean for the sulfate is the RS, then O, then O, like that. Now, after you identify the symbol for sodium and then the formula for the sulfate, the next thing is to determine the valence for sodium and then also the valence for sulfate. Now, the valence for sulfate is already 2, okay? And this is just by memorization because I did a lesson in my online tuition group where I also indicated the various radicals that are there and there valences and that is where you have to learn them and then just memorize them okay so for sulfate it is two and then for sodium it is one now you might be wondering how do i know that for sodium is one because for sulfate i said you have to memorize it okay sodium when you go on the periodic table sodium is written like this okay 11 then here 3 3 so this 11 means atomic number of sodium and also represents the number of four electrons that sodium has. So this sodium atom has 11 electrons. Now, how do these electrons sit in a sodium atom? Okay, so electrons in sodium atom sit as it follows. So the first shell, they sit in shells, okay? So you have a lot of shells in sodium uh, atom. So the first shell of any atom will always have two electrons. So like for this sodium which has 11, out of 11, two should go in the first shell like that. Okay. So from 11, when you remove two, you remain with it nine. Now that nine, where does it go? So some should go in the second shell. So how many electrons are supposed to go in the second shell for it to be full or stable? It is 8. So from 9, you get 8, you put there, you remain with it, 1. Now, where does this 1 remaining go? It can go again in the third shell. 
which is cell number three, okay? So in cell number three, they'll go one. So since we are remaining at one, it will go there. But however, cell number three is supposed to have eight or 18 electrons for it to be stable. Now, since they, there is only one electron remaining, we'll put it there. But in that case, cell number three is not stable, okay? So in such a case, when sodium reacts with the, uh, the, the sulfate here, and since it is not stable, it has to lose that electron in that last cell, which is the cell number three, for it to be stable. So when it loses that electron, it remains with it, two electrons and then eight. So it remains with it, this cell number two with it, eight electrons, and that is now stable. So the atom now is stable because the last shell has now 80 electrons. Now, that number of electrons that sodium has lost is what we call the valence electron, and then it is the one we write here. Okay. Now, once we do that, we need to swap. These two should come here, and then this one should come there. Okay. Then we say equals, so we write sodium, is a two there, then sulfate, then you put it in brackets with a one somewhere here. Now, why, why am I putting it in brackets? Because this sodium, I mean sulfur and oxygen, they are together bonded. And because they are together bonded, they share this one coming from there. Okay. Now, remember, in this previous lesson, or in the previous lesson we did, I say that one does not affect anything in the uh, formula. So we get rid of it or we remove it. So in that case, we will write this one as NA to the SO4. You remove one. Once you remove the one, then you remove the bracket. Okay. And then this one becomes the chemical formula for sodium. Okay. Then we go to that two, which is it. Um, calcium sulfate. Okay. So, for calcium sulfate as well, we need to know the chemical symbol for calcium from the periodic table. It is capital C and small letter A. And then in the sulfate, we have already known that it is SC or, or like that. Now, the valence for sulfate, I said it is 2, so we just put in magnus there. Now, the valence for calcium, we have to determine it the way we have to determine it for sodium. So, on the periodic table, calcium is like Ca, then here 20, then here 40. That means that calcium has got uh, 20 electrons, and how do they see? The first shell will always have 2, okay? So in the first shell, there are two. So from 20, you remove two. You remain with 18. Then these 18 sum should go in the second shell. The second shell should have always eight to be stable. So from 18, you remove eight. You remain with 10. Then like that, three. Then from 10, some electrons should go in the third shell. The third shell should have either 18 or eight. Now from 10, we cannot remove 18 to put there, so we can only remove 8. So we'll put 8 there, we'll remain with 2. So 2 now will go in the last shell, shell number 4. Shell number 4 is supposed to have 8, 18, or 36. Now there is only 2, so we'll put 2 there. Now, this shell is not stable. The last shell, which is shell number 4, is not stable. So since it, it is not stable, when calcium reacts with the sulfate to form calcium sulfate, calcium will lose those two electrons to become stable. So that when it loses two electrons, it will be now two, then eight, eight. So it is stable because the last shell now has got a maximum number of electrons required. So that number of electrons that it loses now, it becomes the valence for calcium. So we can write it here. So the valence for calcium is 2. After you do that, then you cross the 2 comes here. 
and then the other two also come here. Then it's the equals, then which means Pasha more half A2 here. Then you say open brackets, then you have alpha suffix like that will be a two layer. Then you say equals. So because we have a two which is common, you can say two into two one, two into two one. So you can say calcium has a one, open brackets, suffix like that has a one layer. Then equals, you can ignore the one because it doesn't affect anything. So you have calcium like that. Then here you ignore it. Once you ignore it, you remove it with the brackets. So you have this O. So this becomes the chemical formula for calcium sulfate. Okay. Then next we go to copper. Okay. So we have copper to sulfate. We have copper to So now, oh sorry, copper to nitrate. So now this one, we we'll also write the chemical symbol for copper, which is capital U, capital C, small letter U. The nitrate is a radical, so it is also written as capital N, capital O and U3, like that. Now, copper, the balance we are going to give it is 2 here. Okay. Now, you may ask me, where have you gotten the 2, sir? The 2 is coming from this one here, put here. Okay. Why then? You can ask, why have they put it there when here they didn't put a 2, here they didn't put a 1? It is simple. Copper is a transition metal or transition element. Now, transition element have got a, a characteristic of having more than one valence electron. So like copper, sometimes it can have a valence of one, sometimes it can have a valence of two. Now, because of that, whenever copper is reacting with another compound or with another uh, element or radical to form a compound, we have to show the, the type of copper that we are dealing with. So in this case, we have to show the valence that copper have or has in that particular compound. So in this case, we have shown that it is the valence of two, not the valence of one. So in that case, we have to show because if copper has a valence of one sometimes and the valence of two, and we just write without showing which valence it is using, then we are not going to know which balance to use. So in that case, we specify we put two there to show that you use a balance of two. Okay, I hope you understand that. Now, nitrate has always a balance of one. So once you do that, you swap. This one comes here, that one goes there, so that it becomes a copper like that. You fit the one here, then nitrate like that with a two there. Now a one does nothing, so it remains like a copper like that. And open brackets N O three with a two like that. So this one becomes the balance for uh, copper. I mean the chemical formula for copper to nitrate. Yeah, so we have come to the end of this uh, uh, video. I hope you have enjoyed and then you have understood the concept behind the writing chemical formula of compounds for now. Bye and see you in the next lesson. Peace.